I wanted to talk about hunting a bedding area. Now, a lot of people don't like to hunt bedding areas or they feel that with a bedding area being in a sanctuary, and let's back up a little bit, what's a sanctuary? A sanctuary is everywhere you don't want a deer to hear you, see you, or smell you. That means up to your stand locations. So really the largest portion of your property, a contiguous piece should be your sanctuary. Your bedding areas are within that sanctuary. Your food plots are too. Your food plots are part of that sanctuary. And you can make an argument, and I believe it's true, that your food plots should be more a sanctuary and a part of that sanctuary than even your bedding areas because if your food plots are not being hit day during daylight, that means that the bucks you're trying to hold are not holding in your bedding areas sometimes deer in general. So you'll see a bad food plot location in a 40 acre parcel, no matter how much you've worked on the habitat, isn't holding deer because that food plot is a nocturnal food plot. We're down here in a bedding area. This is an area that not only do we not spook the food plot that's right up there on that point, about 250 feet in elevation above us, we don't spook that out and therefore we have deer down here and we have bucks. There's an incredible scrape right next to Dylan right here. And this is a scrape that we'll never see during the deer season unless we're down here retrieving a buck because it's right in a bedding area that we can't hunt. So when I talk about actually hunting a bedding area, I'm not talking about going right in the middle of spooking out the deer. What I'm talking about, this is a good illustration right here. We already have a good bedding area. If you can see, we have a lot of box elder in here. Box elder right here. Box elder has a very pungent smell. You can see when you take that off, you smell that. Once you smell that, you'll get used to what a box elder is. It brings me back to the late 80s when I was hunting farmland in Michigan. Had a lot of box elder along the fence rows right next to the ag land. And so we would actually get dropped off in a stand location right from the tailgate, step up to a tree, go up, put a stand in, and then actually break these branches smell them it's a certain smell we have a lot of box elder in here and that makes for great bedding area cover this is already a very good bedding area we can't hunt down here even if it wasn't a bedding area just simply because the wind swirls we have a long peak up there ridge line we have a point here we have a ridge line over here so the weather just the wind just swirl down here but what we can do is get on top of this bedding area and you can see some of the snow back there and i'm looking at 50 to 100 feet in elevation we have an access trail and we're actually on a road that continues and this road hasn't been opened for i would think 20 30 years as we have trees the size of this box elder right here growing in this road you can see this right here so we have a road that extends up and we could you can see it way in the distance where it's swampy or which what's white very open it goes right up the hill right through this lower swampy area next to the creek, we can connect that with a, a dozer trail from the top. And it's through a non-deer area. Once you get down, partway down this hill, you start getting into deer area. So what we're gonna do, and the way you should look at hunting a bedding area is we're gonna get to the downwind edge. So we hunt a lot of downwind edge bedding areas in the morning. We're getting into the side of that bedding area, we'll wait for the deer to come to us, and those are morning stands, morning blinds. The morning stands are blinds because you have the luxury if you're sitting there for three hours, then you can sit in this location in the morning. Let's say you're getting out of the stand at 10 or 11. One in the afternoon even because thermals are still rising and you have a good wind advantage. You have the luxury of seeing what deer are in that area, what deer are moving throughout that bedding area, where they're bedding, where they're feeding through. So that being said, you know when to get down. On the flip side, if you try to get into an area like this in the afternoon, you don't know if deer are bedding right by the water hole, right by your stand location, on the edge of the bedding area, in the bedding area. And deer don't typically sit in one spot all day. They'll sit up, they have to feed twice during their bedding hours, which we'll talk about in a second. They're standing up, moving around. And so if you're sitting in a stand nearby, you have a huge luxury if you're already there in the morning waiting for them to get, come into that bedding area for knowing when to get out. When you come in the afternoon, you're going in blind, you spook a lot of deer. I hunt on the edge of bedding areas all the time. Sometimes in a bedding area where I can come in, let's say we have a nice trail like this one coming in, we're on the top of a ridge system, I can get into a stand where it blows my scent off the ridge system, I don't have to worry about my scent in any way. I can hunt there again until I don't see bedding, I don't see deer, they've already moved on, I can get out of there when the getting's good, and, uh, and then that way we're preserving this area. I'd rather spook a deer out of this bedding area, taking a chance getting out in the morning, than it would 
spooking the deer out of that food source up there because the deer still can bed around the corner here, but if we spook that food source out and make it nocturnal, there's a good chance those deer are not bedding down here in this location. So what we choose to enhance this bedding area. This has a lot of box elder. You can see it leaning and, and, and uh, really moving every which way. So we're going to make this bedding area, I'm not gonna cut down everything in here, because I wanna make sure that deer can still move throughout this area and have places to bed. You look at an area like this. You can see a flat right up here. Great place for deer to bed down here. It's just a little hump here where they can sit here and see a long ways. There are tracks and pellets all over the place in here. This is one of those places where people say, you know, they avoid their bedding areas for years. What a shame. You need to get in here and see how the deer are using it, how you can improve it. We could come down here all summer because we're designing the property the right way, meaning we have fall food sources, winter food sources. We're placing deer here down when we can actually build a herd, hunt a herd, and create a quality herd. And that means during the fall and winter, not during the summer. So even if deer are here, I don't really care if they're here during the summer or not. I would expect they won't be because we're gonna make thick cover that a big buck doesn't wanna crash his velvet through while it's growing during the summertime. So what we're doing, I'm gonna cut enough of this box elder. You can already see we have a lot of sunlight here, so I'll start focusing on those large canopy box elders. I'll cut those down, let them tip down. It's pretty easy to determine exactly where they're going. You can hinge cut large box elders. You can see all the growth you get out of the side of this tree right here. Look at all these stems. Deer love to feed on this box elder during the winter time. It's an average quality preferred species. You can see where they've ripped off these ends right here in tips. But I can take this box elder. I can put a back cut on it right here. They don't barber chair. There's a lot of resiliency in the wood. It's more like a rubber band. It'll just lay down on the ground. What happens, we'll have a row of box elder trees going right off the top that deer can actually go to and forage on. So it makes a great opportunity for not only side screening, so we can hide this, hide deer in there because they can't see each other, they can't see us coming in, but they can still move throughout here and it's not making one big wall of brush. You wanna make sure there's very few dead ends, meaning deer can go down a tunnel, they have to stop because they have to turn around and it's a dead end where they can get trapped by coyotes or dogs that are running them. So we can create a wall of box elder right here and then we can actually go back and hinge the box elder. When the, when the box elders get to three, four inches in diameter, we can hinge them down again to continue the browse in here for decades to come. That's why hinge cuts with the right material can be perfect in the right situation. So we're removing canopy, we're creating side cover, and we're creating browse at deer level. The worst thing we could do, some of the old information in that's past its time, is we make hinge cuts that are head high. For one, it's dangerous, not a very good idea to do, but at the same time, we're putting cover and browse above the deer's head certainly above our head so let alone a deer which is a lot shorter than we are so i want that food at head level for deer so they could actually eat it and then i want that cover at head level and body level so they can actually hide so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this bedding area out make it a little bit better we're going to extend this bedding area around in this bowl and then i'm going to hunt this and i'm going to come in the morning I'm not going in through the food plot up there. I'm going all the way around. I'm gonna come in this side. And then we have a giant oak tree that's right near this trail. You can see the trail it extends down through here. We'll have to clean out this trail. This trail extends right through this location here. You can see, I don't know if, if Dylan, it's a good illustration, but you can see the strip of snow back there. That's the old two track that probably hasn't been used for 20 years. We're gonna clean that out. And then right up there, it's about a hundred yards away from here, there's a big red oak. We already have a ladder stand right down here because I sat in there on opening day, knew that deer were down here. We just didn't have this set up yet. So make the bedding area better. Deer actually travel on the top side of this bedding area a lot and stay down here low in this ravine. They extend up into our land on all sides. So we're gonna come in from there. We're gonna add a water hole. Doesn't matter if there's water down here in the creek. It's seasonal in nature. It's random. It's not available all the time. So we're gonna put a water hole up here and we're gonna finish off this two tracks. So we can actually fill the water hole when we need to. And then also we can spin all the way around, hunt that with our winds going uphill back into the draw in the morning. Be a great morning area sit. We can use it with any north wind, west wind. So we're really positioned for our best winds, our best hunting. We'll be on the top side of this bedding area, not in the bedding area because the wind's gonna swirl. We'll be up on that ridge system where it can just fly out to the side. 
And it's gonna be a great bedding area and I can't wait to bring that to you. So we're gonna cut a little bit down here right now. Dylan has to get going very soon, pretty soon back. We, we always have a time limit of when we, when we film. We're both really busy and going out and visiting properties. But this is the kind of recommendation we'd make for a client where we have the bedding area, we're keeping the sanctuary in the food plot and the bedding area intact. We're hunting off to the side of this movement. We're actually adding a water hole to make sure that we have a more defined travel route on the existing trail. We're accessing in and out without spooking deer through open timber up there. We're getting to the edge of this great habitat and that's how we hunt bedding areas all the time. I always say that 70-80% of my bucks are shot during the morning hours. They're adjacent to these bedding areas. They're between bedding areas. And I want you to take advantage of hunting those bedding areas. Again, it doesn't mean you spook them out. It doesn't mean you can go in there in the afternoon and, and sit on them. It means that you hunt smartly, blow your scent to the outside, and you get in there in the morning, wait for the deer to come back to you, enhance it where needed, and that's where you find the majority of the bucks. Those bucks move about three times more during the daylight hours in the morning than they do in the afternoon daylight hours. So great opportunity to take advantage of cold. And you can imagine, even if it's warm up top out in the fields, you get down here where it's shaded, deer have water in a water hole you provide. We'll try to stick a 150 gallon tank down here. Rubbermaid has one that's 150, it's only 25 inches high. Unfortunately, it's a little pricey, it's about $150 from TSC, so it's a little bit more than the 110 gallon tanks we use. But if we're gonna come down here, we're gonna get a skid steer in here to help create the, the trail and, and access, and we might as well bury a good, good sized tank. So we're gonna get this cutting right here We'll uh, plan out the stand, and we already have a ladder stand down here we can add to begin with. We'll get a tank down here, and this can be the perfect morning setup right against this bedding area, and I hope you can do the same on your land this season. Folks, I wanna make sure you check out my web class video series, whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.